Natural Changes to Ecosystems Living organisms have changed as abiotic and biotic factors in their environments have changed. The process that makes change in living things possible is called natural selection. In natural selection, those members of the species that are best suited to an environment uh, will survive and reproduce. Changes also take place in ecosystems. Ecological succession refers to changes that take place over time in the types of organisms inhabiting an area. There are two types, primary and secondary succession. In this video, we'll take a look at natural selection and succession. One organism which shows us evidence of natural selection are the stickleback fish that live in the lakes of British Columbia. Originally marine sticklebacks dwelling in the oceans, uh, they were trapped in lakes that formed after the glaciers retreated British Columbia about 13,000 years ago. They adapted to freshwater environments and new species of sticklebacks evolved. Adaptive radiation occurred quickly as well, that is, they evolved to their specific environments or or to fit certain niches. Several of the new species are quite different from the original. In some shallow lakes in BC, species are adapted to different environments within even the same lake. Organisms adapt to change through natural selection. Natural selection is the process in nature where certain members of a species have characteristics that give them an advantage in the environment over other members of the same species, and they're therefore better able or better suited to survive. Thus, they're more likely to mate and pass on the characteristics that help them survive. An example of this would be the, the uh, sticklebacks in the example we just talked about, where the ones that were more suited to the environment they found themselves survived, and the ones that didn't ended up dying off, so they wouldn't pass on their characteristics. So if you were a stickleback that had a long, slender body, and you happened to be shiny, and you blended in really well with your surroundings, you would basically be better suited to survive in that environment than if you really stood out in your environment and couldn't evade predators very, very well if you were less slender and more stocky. So those characteristics or the genes that code for those characteristics would be lost because those organisms would die but the fish that were more suited to the environment they could evade their predators and so as a result they lived to pass on their genes and those genes became the ones that were the ones that were prevalent in the environment another example of this on a larger scale would be the finches of the Galapagos Islands. We know that the finches of the Galapagos Islands arrived uh, as really just one species from the mainland that was probably blown off um, off the coast in some sort of a storm. And as they kind of experienced different niches, those that were best suited to the individual niches that they found themselves in survived and as a result they began to evolve in different directions. Those that found themselves in, for example, uh, an environment that required a lot of um, feeding on foods like nuts uh, were at an advantage if they had nice strong beaks that could actually break the nuts. Another bird like this that had a beak like this, if it found itself in an environment where there were only nuts available to feed on, would probably not have survived. However, if they found themselves in an environment where there were a lot of little seeds or insects to feed on, they probably would have actually been at an advantage. So natural selection depends not just on what your characteristics are, but if you're suited to the environment. Large-scale natural selection is adaptive radiation. And in adaptive radiation, you might have one ancestral organism, like the ancestral finch, that ends up diverging into different species because the individuals find themselves in different uh, environments that require that they adapt to different niches. So either they adapt to the niche or they simply go extinct in that environment. So that's just sort of a brief overview of adaptive radiation and natural selection. Natural selection uh, on a large scale is adaptive radiation. Let's take a look at how ecosystems change over time when we talk about ecological succession. Ecological succession is changes in the types of organisms and area that take place over time. There are two types, primary and secondary. In primary succession, you basically begin with an environment with no soil. 
And this occurs um, in places where glaciers have retreated and they've scraped off any existing vegetation that may have been there, or in areas where there's a lot of volcanic activity and you have cooled lava which produces brand new rock. It includes several stages. The first stage is rock breakdown. How this occurs is that wind carries the spores of lichens to the area. Lichens get nutrients from rock by secreting chemicals that break down the rock. Weathering and lichens gradually change the rock to dirt and as the dead lichens decay and contribute to the organic matter of the dirt we get soil and soil is different than dirt in that it actually has organic matter in it which would provide nutrients for other organisms. So as a result over hundreds of years the soil gradually accumulates. Next stage would be pioneer species arrival. Plant species adapted to harsh conditions can start to grow in areas where there is some fertile soil. This would include certain mosses. They make the soil even more fertile because as they die and decay, um, they basically also leave more organic matter. When they're living, they actually help to retain water in the area, which is going to be attractive to any other seeds that might arrive. So they also provide food for insects and other organisms. This type of succession occurs gradually with the lichens uh, starting the process out by converting the rock to the soil, then mosses arrive, insects might be attracted to the food source of the moss, other microorganisms, eventually other seeds will arrive like grass seeds and wildflowers, you'll get the growth of shrubs, uh, eventually because it's out in the open sun tolerant trees, then later on when there's shade being provided by the sun tolerant trees you would get shade tolerant plants and per perhaps uh, plants like coniferous trees which would be like the evergreens and the pines and we would call that a mature community. So what starts out as rock ends up being um, an ecosystem that provides life and maybe homes for a lot of different types of organisms as well. You can watch a video on primary succession uh, on YouTube and this is also linked on my web page. Secondary succession. In secondary succession the whole process begins with an area that already has soil in it and perhaps there was already an existing ecosystem there uh, with a lot of thriving different species of life but some sort of a uh, major disturbance uh, caused a lot of destruction of those living things for example fire or maybe human disturbances like a bulldozer came through and bulldozed a bunch of trees uh, there may have been a flood or extreme dryness or a drought, a tsunami may have perhaps washed away a lot of the living material and even some of the soil. And even insects can cause large-scale devastation by destroying a lot of the, the um, plant life in an area. So the recovery of the area depends upon the uh, recovery of the existing plants and on species that can rapidly reproduce in new conditions of increased sunlight and open areas. And you can see in this graphic that uh, it's a very simplified version of what happens, but here's our existing ecosystem. Fire sweeps through the area and basically you're left with not barren rock. There is actually soil there already. So succession of this type, secondary succession, actually occurs much more quickly than primary succession because uh, you don't have to wait for the passage of time to break down rock into soil. So now basically any sort of seeds or or uh, spores from neighboring areas can be blown into the area and typically the first sort of species that you're going to see are grass grasses. Then you'll have the small shrub stage again and then you'll start getting um, more mature trees until you finally end up with uh, a mature community again which is or can be somewhat stable. Here's another graphic that shows how that happens and the, the graph at the top looks more complicated than it is. Um, again, any one of these disturbances can take place. There can be fire, humans, uh, effect or um, flooding or maybe even uh, nuclear uh, disasters such as Chernobyl which is basically an ecosystem that's been destroyed and now there's um, basically it's a closed off area and slowly uh, life is beginning to come back.
here's what happens. We start with, um, for example, the bare rock stage. Uh, if it is primary succession, if it's secondary succession, you actually have some soil there. Um, and then you get the first species coming in. Uh, perhaps you have some lichens and then mosses and grasses begin to take hold. And as they take over the first species there, their numbers actually begin to drop off because this becomes the dominant species, perhaps better at competition for light and whatnot. And then as the grasses arrive right here you can see that grasses are taller than mosses and so they'll begin to outcompete the the mosses for sunlight and they become the dominant species for a while but then as you have the arrival of seedlings or you know small trees woody pioneers they're going to shade out the grass and the grass is going to be reduced in in numbers as well and the dominant species will be the woody pioneers and then uh, other seeds might move into the area that are very fast growing and maybe taller growing and they'll actually be able to shade out the original woody pioneers so their numbers will drop off somewhat as well and eventually you'll end up with a climax forest that has some elements of some of these uh, species that came before but in a very delicate balance. Um, one example of secondary succession that was very dramatic occurred on the island of Krakatoa. The whole island pretty much blew up in 1883 due to a really violent volcanic eruption. Uh, it could be heard, you know, as far as 3,000 miles away, and it caused waves and waves of tsunamis that circled the earth several times. Uh, Though no life remained on the island after the volcanic eruption, today it's a tropical rainforest because succession has occurred. So that's within a matter of 150 or 130 years or so. You can watch another really good video on YouTube about both primary and secondary succession. Okay, so that sort of summarizes two ideas natural selection and adaptive radiation, which are related, and succession, both primary and secondary succession.